Now, quality can still happen. Like, Dark Knight was phenomenal. But unfortunately, I think the lesson learned by Hollywood was that was more superhero movies. Yeah. That's what they took from that. Mm -hmm. They didn't take, let's do a highly developed character study with really layered, you know, interesting <laughs> ideas and plot twists and everything. <laughs> right, They right. took, like, you know, let's just do Incredible Hulk. And I, you know, it's interesting because in the superhero genre is where we can see that taking place. Like, Brett Ratner single-handedly destroyed the X-Men <laughs> franchise. Uh, Joel Schumacher destroyed the Batman franchise. Yeah. They brought in some no-name director, and I think, and the writer of Swordfish, of all things, oh, to God. make X-Men Origins. Okay. That got horrible reviews. That tanked in the box office. So they've started to learn that and they put auteurs in charge of the superhero franchises. Yes. Like, there's no way Josh Whedon gets to direct the Avengers without Dark Knight happening. That's a great point. Absolutely. At the same time, though, some auteurs kind of go off the deep end, like Sam Raimi with Spider-Man 3 yeah. was kind of a debacle. Ang Lee with the Hulk. Ang, Ang Lee with the Hulk yeah. being the all-time example <laughs> of that. Although, that's a case of the studio not really understanding what they were doing when they hired him on. <laughs> like, he was never going to make a big you know, Hulk smash blockbuster. Okay. He, we, you know, that's a whole other thing is to debate the Hulk. Yeah. Uh, I like the Hulk a lot. I, mm. Only on repeat viewings. The first time I say I didn't like it, but... Mm. What he did was create an art house flick that it, just it was happened. very character driven. Right, it was a, it was an art house movie that just happened to include a giant green smashing thing. Sure. Like, <laughs> it wasn't a Hollywood movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. I've never thought of that, but like that. But doesn't someone turn into like a blobby jelly? Yeah, his dad. Yeah, his yeah. dad. Yeah, it becomes okay. the whole thing about father and son. And yeah. yeah, but yeah, so they're going the route in superhero movies. But let's say we talked about horror movies, though. That whole genre is dead. For yeah. me. That, I haven't yeah. seen an interesting horror movie, and I don't remember how long, because they know they can put up any bull on the screen and people will go see it. Just, uh, so there's no impetus to do mm -hmm. good movies. I'm always kind of making fun of remakes, reboots, adaptations, but, I mean, there's nothing wrong with those. Some of the best movies are from that. It's right. just if they do it well. Right. I mean, I'm all for remake. Remake Rambo, if you want. Remake whatever, but just if you can do it really well, yeah. I'll buy it. But if you're just going to do it because it's a familiar name, easy to sell and people are going to go see it because of that, then right. it's it's very uh, insulting, you know? And it's it, it just makes everyone cynical. Yeah. And that's, at least with Inception, you know, Nolan was in that spot where I get one movie where I can do whatever I want because I have to make Dark Knight. There wouldn't be as big of an audience for it right. if he didn't direct the third yes, one. Exactly. So he's got some strength there. And that just, you know, it's the whole, like, democracy thing that the people, our votes at the box office, really, you know, can't control things. I'm very happy that this has been number one for two weeks in a row. Obviously, the story isn't easily communicatable through a quick advertisement or the title, so people are going either because it's Nolan and it says from the director of The Dark Knight, or it's DiCaprio, but it's got a kind of a cool idea. Right. So it's really, I went, I went, the second time I saw it was on a Wednesday at 10.30 towards the suburbs and it was packed well, I'm see, like and that's what? that's the one strength of good movies is repeat viewing yeah that's how you, and that's why Dark Knight made so much money was not because every, everyone went to see it but a lot of people went to see it twice yeah you know and same thing with Inception is that people are going again to learn more about the mystery yeah and, stuff. and it just proves that you know th there is no such thing as a film that's too smart if it's done well Anyone can understand right, it, you know. Exactly. It doesn't doesn't mean that you need a PhD or whatever, you know. Like, right. So uh, hopefully movies will be a little more ambitious. I'm also glad he didn't get sucked into 3D. Yes. Oh yeah, that would have been just too gimmicky. There's and there's no need for it. I, yeah. So. And I mean, it's making this money without that added boost from the 3D. Right. This has at least the ambition I wish Avatar would have had mm -hmm. in terms of story. I mean, Avatar was great visually and all that. But I wish it would have pushed more in the story idea kind of realm. Right. And at least Nolan, like Cameron, kind of had his I can do what I want. And he kind of pushed it a little bit further. Mm -hmm. I would say at, now two weeks after seeing it the first time, I've calmed down a little bit. <laughs> I'm, but just in terms of how he made such a complex idea, easily understandable, and how he made almost three hours feel like it just went by like that. Yeah, that's true. You don't notice the time at all. It yeah. just zooms by. You know, and that's, it's a coup for smart filmmaking. It's always great when you can wed smart filmmaking to a blockbuster. Yeah. You know, we can have a smart blockbuster. Those things do exist. Absolutely. And I can agree with you that I kind of wish there would have been a little more messing around the dreams, you know, like what dreams may come or the cell or what I just, make, yeah. matrixy kind of stuff. I guess if you buy the thing that, okay, too much craziness equals the dream falls apart and it's all from Leo's kind of perspective. I can buy it, and it, you know it's kind of gonna be what it's gonna be. Right. But just like you know, that whole hour of just the heist taking place, 
never seen that before and that that just like as i got closer i was like leaning forward 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 <laughs> i mean it was just like nail biting kind of so yeah i no, love that that's true so uh what would you rate this midnight show like go see it in the movies pay i mean this is a big screen experience okay. definitely like it does lose something i think on tv right. so you need to see it in the theater uh my other you know rating it's it's twice watchable. Like you oh, can not go, rewatchable. It's rewatchable nice. in the theater. In the theater, you okay. know, I would pay to see this again. It's the first thing I said after it ended was like, I need to see this again. Great. That's the first thing I said. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's IMAX worthy. It's just because it doesn't. The visuals don't warrant it. It's okay. not that overwhelming where it needs to be that kind of experience. Right, right. And so worthy midnight show. I will agree. I think IMAX was my initial reaction, mm -hmm. but I think it's a very strong midnight show. Um, definitely rewatchable. Definitely get the DVD so you can kind of appreciate it and pause it and, you know. And get listen to commentary. And, yeah, and do this. commentary, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, um, highly recommended yeah, for Yeah, this that. is a good and, movie nerd movie. Yeah. Like, this would be yeah. good for the DVD is to pick apart and, like, yeah. Totally. And it's a sign of movie hope for yeah. the future. Do a quick little plug for Zen and the, the Art of Waitering. Art of Waitering. Waitering. .com. So, you can follow the blog at Zen and the Art of Waitering. .com. Uh, become a fan on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Zen and the Art of Waitering and buy the book Smashwords.com slash books slash view slash 13249. So get it for the waiter in your life. Get it for anyone that's interested in Buddhism or Zen. Get it if you want a cheap laugh. That's it's right. all those things. Or if you're interested in restaurants or interested, in, it's, it's, it's it, funny, I think. It, extend, <laughs> it extends to all areas yes, of life. Yes, exactly. It's very applicable. We need to do this more often. We will. Obviously. We will. It's uh, schedules have been, it's summertime in Chicago, dude. You got to, you know. Enjoy it. And again, there haven't been a lot of good movies. So no, there haven't been. Hopefully, Oscar season's right around the corner, and we'll, we'll have some good quality films coming out. And you know what else is coming out? The Replaceables. Oh, no. The, the, the Expendables. <laughs> the expendables. <laughs> <laughs> well, may, that's a Freudian slip right there. That's maybe true. They are replaceable, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I'm psyched. <laughs> so, that yeah, that's uh, two weeks or so. So, yeah. we'll be back for that. So, okay. uh, until next time, hey. remember, StoryCorp is going to give you more of what you pay for. So, choose your movies wisely. Until and then. Long live, Long live good, good movies. movies.